never so packed for the stack. Never lied on the rap. Got a bag from the way that I write it. Queen looking Tyson. Do that I survived. Doing 80 to the house. Then I hit it to the sky. Change haters on a tirade. Talking to the crib and the face be still. What's up? Welcome back. It has been a minute. But we're back to the tables. I've got an epic episode for you. I'm not going to waste any more time. We're buying in for a thousand. Let's get to the table. Let's get into this epic session by starting off with a bomb pot for the very first hand of the night. King eight offsuit are the weapons for this one. And here's the flop. Oh, you know it's going to be a good night when you have two pair in the very first hand. An opponent now leads out for $80. It folds around to me and I could make a raise here. But with position, my opponent's stack size of a 420 remaining. I like the call with the plan to raise the turn. If my opponent checks, we can still get the money in by the river. I call. Turn is a complete blank with a three of spades. My opponent leads for $160. I announce that I'd like to play for the remainder of our stacks, and he's in there with the call. The river is another nine. Oof. I turn up my king eight, only to see king ten from my opponent, who now has the same two pair with a better kicker. Wait, I thought this was supposed to be an epic win. It is, but it doesn't start that way. Stick with me. It gets good. Nothing like getting slapped upside the head by the deck to start the night to keep you humble and hungry. I add on to get back to 1K and then pick up Ace Jack of Spades in early position. I raise it 20 bucks with one of the weakest hands that I will open from this position. I get four callers and we see the flop of Jack of Clubs, Nine of Hearts, Eight of Hearts. This flop is really good for my opponent's calling ranges, so I'm not going to add money here when I can easily be behind. The action checks through. The turn is the four of clubs and the small blind leads out for 35 bucks. The big blind calls and I feel okay calling here given the insane price that I'm getting. The hijack calls as well. The river is the three of diamonds. The big blind bets $40. Again, this is such a small bet, and the big blind wasn't the one to lead on the turn. I just can't fold knowing that I barely ever have to win this hand for the call to be correct. I go ahead and throw it in, and my opponent shows ace nine for a second pair. I'm very surprised this was played as a bet. I was expecting to see a potential worse jack here. Hey, but I'm happy to be dragging these chips. A key ingredient of every monster session is picking up big hands like aces. There are two limps in front of me, so I bump this one up to $30. The button behind me and the big blind both call. The flop is 946. The board has enough coordination to get a call from worse, but the texture won't allow a lot of worse hands to call a large bet very often, especially since I'm holding the ace of hearts, reducing the flush draws. For that reason, I'm going to bet, but I'm going to make it $45 to try to get that call, and the button does call. The turn is the six of spades. I bet $75, hoping that our opponent gets sticky with a nine or a flush draw, but the opponent lets this one go. In every hand, you have the choice to be aggressive in the way you approach things or to be passive, and you kind of get to decide how to navigate. In this one, I got aggressive. The action is a raise to $15, a call from the button, and the action's on me in the small blind with monkeys. I got the king-queen offsuit. So this spot is either a fold or a raise, as this hand does not play well out of position with multiple opponents. For that reason, I bump it to $75. Only the middle position player calls. The flop is four of spades, six of hearts, nine of hearts. I bet $65 as I'll be continuing with a large portion of my range on a board like this after I've three bet pre. My opponent does make the call. The turn is the eight of hearts. So now the flush comes in. All right, I gotta let you in on my thought process a little bit because it gets a little muddy here. I cut out $200 like I'm gonna make a bet and I was planning on doing it. I have the king, I've got a draw, and really I just have two overs. Now that said, I'm gonna have some portion of my range, like a bunch of over pairs, like let's say I'm holding uh, like black kings in this spot, so I don't have the heart redraw, but I've got the over pair, and now the hearts come in. What's calling me, you know, maybe it's a nine, maybe it's some like pocket tens or something that was willing to call, so do I really wanna blow this pot up when the flush comes in? I may not want to do that. So for that reason, I kind of slow myself down and I think I can check here, I can assess what happens, and if he happens to check back, I have a chance to hit the hearts and then I can still represent those big pairs that would say, okay, I'm safe now, I'm gonna bet my kings. So I end up not betting the $200 on the turn. He checks behind. 
I decide to make the move as though I'm holding those big cards. I block the flush so his hand shouldn't be all that strong given my blockers and the action. I bet the $200, expecting that my opponent is not going to be able to show up with a really strong hand that often and will probably make the fold at a high enough rate for this to be profitable. My opponent thinks for a while, but I think my strange movement followed by a pause was too strange and made him curious. He looks me up with a nine and drags the pot. I don't like how I played this one, but you know that I don't try to hide stuff from you. I'm showing you when I make a mistake so that we can both learn from it. You can learn from my mistakes and not make them. And I have to admit to you that I played like a donkey, which makes me not want to play like a donkey anymore. All right. <laughs> Shake that one off. Let's go to a better hand. When you know you're going to need a lucky session, you're going to want to chop the foot off of a rabbit. I glued a mirror back together that had been broken for good luck, and I climbed over a ladder instead of walking under it. So while my expected value in this hand should be pretty standard, my expected luck is at a much higher level than normal. Middle position opens at $20. The low jack raises to $75. He's a tighter player. He's going to have strong ranges. He doesn't 3-bet very much. I decide to go ahead and make it $200 because I know that I will get lucky. So I can take this thing down pre-flop. If not, I've got position for a big hand against a player who's going to play fairly tight. I'm going to know kind of where he's at as the hand plays out. So the low jack makes the call, and now it's time for that luck to come through. Shablasmo! Like a true luck box, I flop top set on queen jack 10. Perfect. That glued back together mirror is absolutely doing its work. I'm now beating all of his calling range other than ace king. He checks to me and I down bet to $150. Walking over that ladder and cutting off the rabbit's foot is clearly paying off when we hit quad queens on the turn, but I'm gonna go with $150 again. It's an extremely small bet, and I expect my opponent to be incentivized to occasionally jam his stack, but also if he does make the call on the turn of a very small bet that's hard to get away from, then it's pretty easy to set up the river jam. So that's what I go with. I go with 150 again. He makes the call. So now we just need to jam the river on the four of clubs. He checks. I put the money in. He calls. A shout out to my rabbit buddy, Tripod. Appreciate you. This is how you know that the heater is on. When you're stacking up chips from your last win and before you can finish stacking up the hall, the next hand is something like pocket kings. I raise... We go to a safe looking flop, C bet, and add to the chips that we're stacking. Hey, let's follow that one up with aces. Under the gun one raises to 25 over a limp. I raise to $80 in the cutoff. The opener calls. The flop is 364 rainbow. It checks to me. I bet 70. He releases his hand. More chips to the stack. All right, a quick update. We're all the way out of the hole, and now we're sitting on some profit. I learned just a few hands ago that I'm invincible with queens this session. It's like I have a Mario star on me. It's going to wear off eventually, but while we're hot, let's keep it running. Under the gun raises to $20. I re-raise to $80 in middle position over a caller. Under the gun calls. The flop is 8 of spades, 9 of spades, 10 of diamonds. This hand isn't the best, but it's an okay flop to continue on. My opponent did raise pre-flop, so that's going to put him into some stronger hands. He will still connect with this board a decent amount. So I need to proceed with caution. I'm not going to bet three streets, but I will go ahead and bet this flop. I bet 75 and I get a call. The turn is the king of clubs. My opponent checks, and this is a good spot for me to check back. The overcards come in, and I, I either need to bet here one more time and then take the river off, or check and then analyze what happens on the river. So I go ahead and check this one back to keep the pot under control. His range will be pretty split here between slow played monsters and draws that don't have anything. Only a few value hands exist that are worse than ours and are willing to call another bet. For that reason, I check back. The river is the seven of clubs. Now this is not the card that I was hoping to see and my opponent now bets for $100. I can't really call here. Such a scary board, a terrible run out, a four liner to the straight, there's just almost no way that I'm good. My hand has been reduced to a bluff catcher, and I don't think that my opponent is leading very light here, so I go ahead and fold. Now I pick up Ace of Hearts, Ten of Hearts, and the low jack, and I raise to $20. The high jack calls, and the cutoff makes a very small 3-bet to $60. I have 1.9k here, and my opponent is deep. With that in mind, and a 3-way pot possible, I don't mind calling here with some nice implied odds if the flush shows up. Unfortunately, I'm not a plumber, and therefore, I'm not very good at flushing. But the next best thing is king, queen, jack for the nuts. I check, hoping that since this should hit my opponent's range well, I can get a solid check raise in. Instead, it checks through. The turn is another king. 
I think this is the perfect card to add confidence to any king combos or even some queens that are less likely to now see the overcard. I think my opponent, even if they don't have anything, they're going to be incentivized to stab. I check one more time. Middle position bets $45 and the cutoff calls. Perfect. Now we can make the move. I crank it up to $250, hoping that an opponent is holding a king and won't be able to get away. Nope. They both let it go. You could argue I should have made a smaller raise here, but I wanted to go big to make it look bluffy and hope that the king just wouldn't be able to believe me and get away. Unfortunately, they clearly didn't have the king. They let it go. Here's some more pocket kings that win another small pot on the flop. It's a heater, baby. For this hand, I'm the big blind, and I check my option with five of hearts, six of hearts, when a couple of players limp. The flop is seven of hearts, eight of hearts, three of clubs. Dude, we are running so good. The small blind bets $15. I'm happy to call with this. I've got an open-ended straight flush draw. You could argue that you want to be raising here. I'm out of position. I don't know what my opponents have, and I'm totally fine with having the chance to get a big monster hand by the river with all this draw equity. Three others call as well. The pot is building. The turn is another seven. I check, expecting to check call, but this time it checks through. The river is the four of spades. We've made a straight. Let's see if we can get some money out of it. I throw 50 bucks out there. I do get a call from the small blind. It's not a huge win for hitting the straight, but we'll take it and add these chips to the stack as well. Remember earlier in the episode when I told you that I had a hand to show you how sticky this table was? Well, watch this. The heater meter is maxing out here. It's only been a few hands since I won with a straight, and now more pocket aces. Sometimes it's just your night. There's a very strange raise to $10, another to $50, a call, and then it's on me. I re-raise to $225. And remember, I was telling you they were pretty sticky. This is really sticky, and here's the proof. Three players make the call. Holy crap, guys. There's $1,000 in there almost, and I can only bet 300 on the flop. The flop is king of spades, queen of spades, six of spades. I have an overpair and a draw to the nuts. I bet $300, that state maximum bet, and I get a call from the original Razor. The turn, the three of diamonds. He checks again, and I'm not going to keep piling money in for him. He called $225 preflop, then called another bet on the flop. He is going to have some ace-king, but I block that ace-king heavily with holding pocket aces. The other combinations are kings, queens, king-queen, spades. I mean, there's just so many things that I can be running into here. I don't really want to keep blowing this pot up and then have to make an additional call on the river, so I'm just going to go ahead and check back. The river is the six of clubs. My opponent bets $300. Now, I took the turn off with the plan to call basically on any card that wasn't a king. I think about this one for a while. I feel like it's not the best spot to call. I don't like that I'm blocking the hands I want him to have. That said, I, I'm, I'm going to be able to go ahead and throw in this call, knowing that I'm going to lose a fair amount, but I'm winning often enough against a king-x combo that I can make the call here. So I reluctantly throw it in, and it turns out we're good. We're on a heater. Why did I ever question it? The heater meter has officially reached overheated. Time to book a $2,000 win before I give any back so that I can share this win with the Patreon community. Let's stack it up. All right, we stack up a mountain of chips. We bought in for 1,000, we added on for 500, we added on for 500 again. We were into this game for $2,000, but we cashed out for $4,000, meaning we're booking a nice profit. $200 of that is going to you Patreon supporters. I always give away 10% of my wins to those who support the channel. If you're not supporting it yet, get in there because these four people are getting paid today. 50 bucks coming your way. Thanks for supporting the channel. Thanks for being here. I will see you again next time.